It's a huge sports day here in Pittsburgh as the Pitt Panthers, number one in basketball for the first time ever, play host to the St. John's Red Storm. The Oakland Zoo will be rocking. It's Pitt and St. John's at the Peterson Center, and it's next. Welcome to the University of Pittsburgh, where today the number one Pitt Panthers take on the Red Storm of St. John's on the Big East Network. A look at the standing shows Pitt number one in basketball for the first time ever. They've been second a lot of times, but now they have that lofty spot, and they plan to keep it. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Crickey with former Rutgers and Jacksonville head coach Bob Wenzel. Jamie Dixon, coach of Pitt, says... We look to dominate on rebounding. That's the key to our success. And they play great defense. And they've been doing everything they can do to be number one. They're not going to give it up easily. <laughs> they certainly are not. They are reflective of the Steel City. They are tough. And I'll tell you what, they make you miss. They don't make you turn it over, but they make you miss. And they are awesome on the boards. And a look at the star watch shows a native Pittsburgher leading the way for St. John's. Yeah, had a great game against Notre Dame. He and Blair played on Shenley High School. And Sam Young. He is something to behold out on the floor. A small forward who can do everything out there, Don. He can put the ball on the floor and watch this nifty move using the glass. That is body control. And I'll tell you what, when he is filling the lane, watch out below because he can fly to the hoop as well. Sam Young, the number one player on the number one team in the nation. And DJ Kennedy will be in this game trying to guard the aforementioned Sam Young, the leading player on St. John's so far this season. So it's the Pitt Panthers, number one, against the Red Storm of St. John's. They've both been off for eight days. They're looking forward to this. We'll have the starting lineups and the opening tip-off in a moment. Let's go, Pitt! You're in the... Today's Big East game is brought to you by... Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. And by Interstate Batteries, over 200,000 dealers nationwide. Find one at interstatebatteries.com. Steeler weather in Pittsburgh, where later today the Steelers go against the San Diego Chargers in a divisional NFL playoff game. But right now, Pitt is number one, the Pitt Panthers. And we take a look at our starting lineup brought to you by Interstate Batteries. There is a, a young team dominated by sophomore players for St. John's coming in at 10-4 and four with their biggest win. Maybe the uh, Norm Roberts era, Bob Wenzel, the beat, the beat of Notre Dame a week ago. Indeed, that was a terrific win for them. Paris Hard is going to be running the show for them. Quincy Roberts, of course, the point guard in Malik Booth's absence. And then the Pitt Panthers, 14-0, the longest current winning streak in major college basketball. Lavance Fields, who almost went to St. John's, grew up a St. John's fan in Brooklyn. He runs the show from the back line. They call him the general. Then they've got those powerful rebounders. Talking about the rebounding advantage Pitt has. Jamie Dixon says, we don't want to re re win the rebound count. We want to dominate rebounding. We want to clean the glass. Very physical team. Very unselfish team. Uh, Pitt's a legitimate national championship contender. No doubt about that. As of now, they would be a number one seed. They are plus 11 in rebounding on the season against their opponents. Hit in the white uniforms. Red Storm in the red. Ball is tipped back to LeVance Fields. And the win over Georgetown the last time out. LeVance Field had eight assists for Pitt. No turnovers. That's unbelievable. His numbers have been remarkable all year long. 6.5 assists for that great point guard. Jermaine Dixon going hard to the rack. As we look at Norm Roberts in his fifth year as head coach of the Red Storm of St. John's. His team coming in at 10 and 4, 1 and 1 in the conference. He says, uh, Bob, that he thinks Pitt's the best rebounding team in the country. I don't think there's any argument he's going to get from anybody. And Sam Young, left alone, will drain the three. He makes more threes than anybody on Pittsburgh's team, and that is not one of their weapons in normal games. Now they're a down low team, they pound it down in. But uh, Young at 19.5 points a game, and now a turnover at the St. John's end, so it's back over to the Panthers. Well, Cooper is in the game for 
starter, Justin Burrell, right off the bat. Burrell was wearing a face mask. We'll check whether he's been re-injured. Yeah, a lot of touches, Bob, at the offensive end. Everybody gets a look at the ball. Indeed, they, they really do not turn the ball over very much. As you talked about, everybody shares the duties. Nice block by Cooper there. Well, Pitt will inbound the ball. And here is uh, Jermaine Dixon, a freshman from Baltimore and Tallahassee Junior College. Another outside look. This time at Karam's offense. St. John's rebounds nicely. D.J. Kennedy, who played with Dewan Blair at uh, Shenley High School here in Pittsburgh. Kennedy was a key player in Pitt's and St. John's upset of Notre Dame. 20 points and 10 rebounds in that one. Look at this trap on the sideline. You talk about physical. Good night. Wow. You can't reverse the ball on these guys, particularly when they have the sideline as an extra defender. Burrell is on the sideline, stretching out his legs. Looks like he might have gotten a little cramp or something right in the first play. He's very high on what Tyrell Biggs is doing. He's got 14 points in the win at Georgetown. And the De Hoyas 29 game home win streak. Here's the steal. Well done by St. John's. Freshman Quincy Roberts took it away. Focus and 40 minutes of intensity is the mandate that Norm Roberts has given his team. You know, we should mention for Norm Roberts that Malik Booth, the normal starting point guard, is on the bench. He has a thumb injury. And with Booth out, Quincy Roberts, a freshman, has taken over those duties. Booth has missed the last three games. This is his fourth. And he's an outstanding guy, averaging five assists a game. So they are without their floor general. St. John's, Paris Horn stealing the ball to get it back. St. John's, though, has turned it over three times already in their offensive end as they trail 3 0. Roberts. Pulling up, elevating, and knocking down the jump shot. It's a 3 to 2 game. The Panthers in the lead. There is uh, the left hand of the general, Malik Booth. As I mentioned, five assists per game, and without him in there, Roberts is going to get a lot of duty at the point guard spot. Dixon fires, good block out by Blair. A dominating rebounder, 12 and a half rebounds a game. Well, this year, St. John's has been bit by the injury bug. Anthony Mason, Jr., who's their best player, is out for the year. Malik Booth has that thumb, and Justin Burrell right there is having to wear a mask because of some facial injuries that he got earlier in, a, in practice where he bumped into Sean Evans. He'd like to take the mask off if they let him. He doesn't like it. He's going to have to wear it for the entire season, I'm told. Well, Rick, Rick Hamilton has adjusted to it quite nicely. So yes. Connecticut in the NBA. He won't take his off. <laughs> you know, we talk about Levance Fields with the ball right here. The last five games, this guy's got 28 assists and only three turnovers. You talk about numbers for a point guard. That's unbelievable. Harris Horn with the last field goal for St. John's. Gives the Red Storm their first lead of the day for the three. St. John's has not won at Pittsburgh in 10 years. 99 was the last time, and now some great low post work by Dewan Blair, the big sophomore. Blair Harris Horn gets the foul. Sorry, Blair understands double teams. He understands the geography of the paint. Only 6'7 with a 7 foot 3 inch wingspan. This guy had 20 points and 17 boards against Georgetown. Look at that middle number, Don. 12.5 boards a game. I think he's the best rebounder in the country. Power player never uh, played high school football, but was offered a football scholarship by Penn State. And I, I talked about it before the game about it. He thought seriously about giving it a shot. It looks like a defensive end at 6'7", 265, who can run fast. Well, there is precedent for that at the University of Pittsburgh. Remember Sam Clancy back years and oh, years yeah. ago played basketball for Pittsburgh right. and had a great NFL career. He was a pass rusher for the Cleveland Browns of renown. Now St. John's careless with the ball. Four turnovers already for the Red Storm. 
And aside from Sam Clancy, Antonio Gates, a uh, basketball player in college and uh, doing a pretty fair job in the NFL as a uh, tight end, huh? Well, he'll be on Heinz Field this afternoon. Tight end for the San Diego Chargers, the all-pro tight end. This is Steeler weather out there. Snowflakes in the air, nice brisk wind, temperature in the 20s. Just like they like it in Pittsburgh for a playoff game. <laughs> well, fortunately for us, basketball is played indoors, and we don't have to deal with any of that. Pittsburgh has to deal with an interesting mental situation. This is the first game they've played as the number one team in the nation, and of course, number one historically for the first time ever for this program. That takes its mental toll, but not its physical toll on the boards with that smiling big man. And this by LeVance Fields, the putback by Dewan Blair, and the Panthers have their biggest lead, 8-4. to four. Evans with a down low dish attempt, and St. John's, they've got to call a timeout and settle this down. This young team has turned the ball over five times already in less than five minutes of play. So the Panthers, number one, they've been number two 16 different times, but now they have the top spot, and they lead 8-4. to four. I've never been all that great with my money, probably because I've never had much. But now that I'm making more, it's time to be a little smarter about how I manage it. With the calendar, I can schedule all my payments, so when funds are low, Danger Days help me stay out of the red. I can also transfer money with just a click and a drag, so maybe I'm better with money than I thought. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC, a high-definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. City Cash Returns card can help you write it because City never sleeps. Welcome back to Pittsburgh. Don Crickey with Bob Wenzel. Panthers up on St. John's 8 to 4. Today's Big East Coaches Spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. As we take a closer look at Coach Jamie Dixon of the Panthers. 14 0 start for the third time. This is not new territory for Jamie. Six seasons as the head coach. He was four seasons as Ben Howland's assistant. Part of the architecture of the resurgence and the remarkable resurgence of the Pittsburgh basketball team. It's been unbelievable during his tenure. The only thing missing right now from his resume is a trip to the Final Four. And this year could be it, huh? They certainly have the, the ability to get there. Keep all these top players in the lineup without injury. Here's Biggs with a turnaround. Rebound comes down to Barella St. John's. Amy Dixon said, Bob, that uh, one of our goals was not to win the poll in January, but it's nice, <laughs> nice to be number one. Yeah, and I'll tell you that the, the uh, when you are number one, I was number one when I was at Duke. Nice shot by Burrell. And, and uh, what happens is it's not about the players. They, they seem to be okay, but it's all of the media attention and what the coach has to deal with in those areas. Driving shot to the basket as the freshman Jermaine Dixon takes it through and lays it in. And Pitt goes to a three-point lead. 
Well, if Jermaine Dixon looks familiar to you right here as he takes the ball to the basket with some authority as he goes to the free throw line, this is the younger brother of Juan Dixon. Remember him who played for Maryland when they won the national championship and in, in the NBA right now. Jermaine off to a good start. Junior college transfer, good numbers. Not a good outside shooter, but this guy can really play the D. He must play the D if he's a freshman starting for Pitt. And he completes the three-point play. Jermaine Dixon. And uh, Pitt again with a four-point lead. What's remarkable to me about Pittsburgh is they bring guys in, you know, it's not necessarily all the McDonald's All-Americans that play for them. They do a great job of developing the talent that they have. And Bob, Jamie Dixon talks about building a program the right way. He said there's no shortcuts, and he likes what St. John's is doing as the Red Storm gets a put back and will go to the free throw line. And he does, and, and I think what he respects about the Red Storm is, you know, they're, they're a very good rebounding team as well. And Evans did a good job on the weak side right there. Jamie Dixon respects the hard kind of things that go with basketball, the defense, the digging it in and getting on the, on the boards. And St. John's has been doing that this year. Sean Evans completing a three-point play. The foul was on LeVance Fields, his first. One-point lead pit. Little token press to take some time off the shot clock. Pitt now only with 24. I like what Norm Roberts is doing right here. He's trying to keep the number one team in the land off balance a little bit. He's pressing and then going back into his own, switching to some man-to-man. -man. When you change defense, it takes a while for the offense to adjust. I think that's a wise thing for the underdog to do. Roberts talks about when uh, hits at the defensive end, you have to go deep into your shot clock to get a good look. He said, no easy shots against this team. And now it's Pitt shooting. Young, who hit from his first uh, shot of the day from out there, misses the three try. Here comes St. John's in position to take the lead. And again, the ball is taken away, not taken back by St. John's. Beautiful move down low as the ball is laid up and in by Sean Evans, who was a standout high school football player at Northeast Time, Philadelphia. Well, Evans has had a good year so far. I mean, he had 19 points, 13 boards against Marist, 13 points, and 8 against Virginia Tech. So he has some muscle close to the basket. He comes right back and rebounds at the defensive end, Evans. Morell and Blair, nice matchup. So quick to double up on the ball, and they just take it away. Oh, just rip it out of there. That's the sixth turnover in eight possessions. And yet St. John's has the lead. <laughs> well, Pittsburgh is getting good shots at their end, but not drawing much iron so far in this game. You know, Jamie Dixon, we talked to him before the game back in his office, and uh, the double team very much in evidence right here. The two best players, Blair and Young, taking care of business there. But Pittsburgh is not an explosive type team. I mean, they grind it out at the offensive end. There are times when they go through periods where they don't score. And that's why they rely on their D to keep them close. Brad Wanamaker, the free throw line. He was fouled by freshman Quincy Roberts. But well, Wanamaker's an interesting story, Don. You know, he's, if you look at his numbers, five points, and he is a talented player. They go to Rutgers, and Rutgers not one of the top teams, but they're struggling, they're struggling, they're struggling. This guy gets 15 points in that game off the bench, and they win in a tight game. So they have substitutes that perform when the opportunity presents itself. Wanamaker, one of them. That Rutgers game, won by Pitt, was the only time this season the Panthers have trailed at halftime. They came back to win it. They shut down Rosario, who had 15 for Rutgers in the first half. They didn't give him any looks in the second half. A lot of substitutes in the game right now. Ashton Gibbs is in there, Gilbert Brown in there, and Wanamaker. I'll tell you, if I was getting double teamed by Blair and Young, I'd run away toward the 10-second line, too. Man, they are ferocious. Shooting comes and goes, but defense travels. It's there every game. <laughs> Pitt prides themselves uh, on just a rock rib defense. Well, what they do, you know, it, it, it does travel. And the old saying is offense sells tickets and defense wins championships. And I think Jamie Dixon is a believer in that phrase. 
Amy Dixon in his sixth year as the head coach came here as an assistant to Ben Holland. Turn around. Rims out, doesn't go for Justin Burrell, and here comes Pitt full speed. Wanamaker, dish. Long ball down. Gibbs, the best three-point shooter on this team, Mr. Cricky. Number one in the conference in percentage, although he hasn't taken a lot. Nice answer right there. By Paris Horn. Ashton Gibbs out of uh, Seton Hall Prep played under Bob Farrell there. Seton Hall Prep turning out a lot of good players. Yeah, one of the best ever at Pittsburgh. Brandon Knight, a great point guard, was a Seton Hall Prep grad. St. John's has really done a great job in staying close early in the game against Pitt on a foreign territory. This is good news. Horn, Lee, driving shot up and down. It'll be a Pitt Kaiser. People flying in there. St. John's, I tell you, got to like their intensity. <laughs> They're leading the game despite six turnovers already. Very, very good in transition are the Red Storm right here. Foul was on Wanamaker. The student body that sits behind uh, called the Oakland Zoo. They're a little bit less, less rambunctious than usual, but they'll be revved up here shortly. In the islands, tropical flavors bring out the best in fresh seafood. At Red Lobster, we're bringing new island-inspired entrees to you. Like tender, wood-grilled Caribbean rock lobster and shrimp, brushed with a sweet and spicy glaze. New Hawaiian Isle shrimp and salmon. And new wood-grilled citrus rum shrimp and scallops, flame-seared to seal in the juices. Wood grilling and the flavors of the islands. A whole new way to love seafood. For a limited time, at Red Lobster. You're up. Nah, you go ahead. All right. Impressive. Where'd you learn that? Some fancy golf school. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? What are you, taking lessons? Come on, what's your secret? You got your own pro? Yep, got a bunch of them. The key to better golf is the best instruction, and Golf Digest is the only place you can learn from the game's hottest pros. Ernie Els, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods. Call today, and for just $14.97, you'll get 12 issues of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow techniques, equipment reviews, pocket tips, and much more. Subscribe now, and you'll get this DVD free. Renowned instructor Jim McLean demonstrates practice plans that will help improve your game. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. If you're in debt to the IRS for $10,000 or more, you don't have to take desperate measures to settle your account. All you have to do is put the right people to work for you. And that's as simple as calling this number. You'll speak to a tax expert who can help you negotiate a settlement that's significantly less than the actual amount you owe. They saved my business. I owed $30,000 and paid a fraction of it. Call this number and get your case settled for less. Now you only have a small window of time to settle, so act now. This is Don Cricky with Bob Wenzel back at the Peterson Event Center, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. With St. John's, despite a rash of turnovers, is leading number one pit 16-15 all season long. Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Big East Conference. Today we'll take a look at the Oakland Zoo. Established in 2001 by a Pitt student, Matt Cohen. Now well over a thousand strong, the Pitt student section known as the Zoo gives the Panthers a resounding home court advantage. And you get a free t-shirt as well. How about that? Yes, you do, but they, you check very carefully getting into that <laughs> section. You have to have a special <laughs> wristband. Champion, it's how you play. You know, I, I was given one of those Oakland Zoo uh, shirts uh, several years ago. I brought it home, and my son said, Dad, I thought you were doing a game. I didn't know you were going to the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, interestingly enough, if St. John's wasn't turning the ball over, they'd be way ahead. Seven for nine from the field so far for the Red Storm, but with six turnovers. So far, Pitt's offense has been anemic, out of sync. They've been off for eight days, and I think it's taken its toll a little bit. They had a big scrimmage Wednesday complete with uh, officials. But back doesn't go. St. John's rebounds again. That last free throw by Quincy Roberts gives him five points for the day. Here's Paris Horn. 
One and done at that end, and here comes Wanamaker leading a break. Nice control right here. That's the way to pass the ball, reverse it against the retreating defense. Gilbert Brown, nice shot, my friend. Leading candidate for the sixth man award in the Big East this year is Mr. Gilbert Brown. Sophomore from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Started 15 games last year, Don, and coming off the bench and adjusting to that role nicely. Rebounded, taken down by Wanamaker. High game at 17 all. It's been 10 years since the Red Storm has won at Pitt. Very few people win at Pitt. Big East basketball continues Saturday when Dominique Jones leads the South Florida Bulls into Morgantown to take on Bob Huggins and his West Virginia Mountaineers. That's the game of the week on the Big East Network as South Florida takes on West Virginia. Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 Central. Check your local listings. St. John's coming into the game at 10 and 4, 1 and 1 in the Big East. And now the Red Storm again takes the lead as it's Thomas, Rob Thomas, a redshirt sophomore from New York City with a shot. Thomas has had several knee injuries during his career. Big time player out of high school. It's good to see him back on the floor playing. Had a nice game against Notre Dame with 10 points. Vance Field, a quarterback of the Pitt team, playing an off guard right now as Wanamaker has the ball. Norm Roberts said, Bob, he recruited him as hard as he's ever recruited a guard from New York City. He said the two guys he really wanted and got neither were Kyle McElarney from Staten Island. Now I know the name, of course, and uh, Levance Fields. Well, interestingly enough, you mentioned those two players. Paris Horn, two games in a row, is guarding the two of them. Paris Horn did a great job on McElarney in their victory, and now out here trying to deny a Levance Fields. So uh, the sophomore from Bridgeton Academy in Maine doing a good job on field so far. Driving try doesn't go, and here come the Pitt Panthers full speed as Fields takes to the distance. Big uh, point of emphasis for Coach Norm Roberts in St. John's is uh, 40 minutes of intensity. Norm has uh, gone full speed in a lot of games, but not for the duration against Notre Dame they did, and they got the big result. Well, so far the intensity has been very good on the part of the Red Storm, especially at the defensive end, changing back and forth, this time a zone. Confusing Pittsburgh so far. The only offensive weapon really has been Blair on the offensive board so far for Pittsburgh. You know, and St. John has some muscle. Sean Evans right there in your screen, 6'9", 250. Burrell is 240. So St. John's brings some strength and uh, width to the lane area as well, as many, many teams in the Big East do. We talk about some of the top big guys in this league. Harren Gody, of course, at your alma mater, a great one, leading the, the uh, league in scoring and rebounding. Blair among the better players in the nation as far as physicality is concerned. Well, he was a super generator of power in that game against Georgetown, the upset. Winning at Georgetown their last time out for Pitt, 20 points and 17 rebounds and no turnovers. <laughs> that is one in that game. <laughs> no turnovers. And of course, Fields had no turnovers in that game either. Pitt not doing it from the line, and here's a shot at the other end. And St. John's extends his lead off the long ball by Pittsburgher DJ Kennedy. He played at Shenley High School here before going to St. John's. I don't think St. John's realizes Pitt's the number one team in the nation. They're certainly not playing with any intimidation factor at all. St. John's looks very good in their diversity on offense, getting some inside and outside shots. Red Storm young and fast. They play hard. You see a loose ball on the floor. You'll see five guys diving at it if they get a chance. Well, you talk about St. John's and, and the respect that you're giving them right here. Last year, St. John's won 11 games total. Norm Roberts' team, 11 and 19. This year, they have 10 wins already, and we just started the league season. So the intensity of that man is being transferred to his team nicely this year. Now it's a 21-19 game as Tyrell Biggs hits for the Panthers. Pitt is now 7 of 20 field goal shooting. Open look for the moment for Burrell. St. John's are protecting the ball better than they did early when they turned the ball over five times in just over the first four minutes of the game. 
We're coming to you from the Peterson Event Center, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Pitt Panthers, number one in college basketball. Don Crookie with Bob Wenzel on the Big East Network. St. John's and Pitt both have been off for eight days, both coming off huge wins. Pitt at Georgetown. St. John's over Notre Dame at Madison Square Garden. Well, Norm Roberts getting it into it right here with the officials. He's got to be careful. I'm not sure what he's angry about right here. We had a break in the play. Ball was inbound, and Pitt's got a quick basket. He's furious. I thought he thought that he thought his players thought there was a delay in play, a stoppage in play. <laughs> well, right here, the long pass. Blair awake. St. John's asleep. They took advantage of the situation and scored. This is my first time watching St. John's in person this year, Don, and I am very impressed. This team is a lot better than the last three teams, last four teams that Norm Roberts has had. Here's some of the guys I think are the best big guys in the league, Heron Gody and Blair among them. We'll be looking at that after we go to a break. A 21-21 game here at Pittsburgh with 7.59 to play in the first half. No. St. John's on the road, tied up right now with number one Pittsburgh, 21 all. Well, let's go inside the play on this one. St. John's clears the side. Everybody to the left-hand side. Rob Thomas, they clear it for him. He gets the one-on-one -on -one look against McGee. They wanted that matchup, and he scored. Here's another look at it. Clear the side. Let your guy go one-on-one. -on -one. Nice play by Thomas. And here are some of those big guys we were talking about. Haran Gody, Blair, Onuwaku, and Fabit. Onuwaku leads the country in field goal percentage. Look at that, 71%. And of course, Thabit, an excellent shot blocker. Haran Gody, the best offensive player of this group. And Blair, the best rebounder of that group. But that is some power in the Big East with those four. It's a conference loaded with power. Aaron Gody with 30 points and 16 rebounds as the Irish had to come from behind yesterday to defeat Seton Hall. Yeah, unbelievable. He gets numbers every single night. And he has rounded out his game. He was a close to the basket guy. Now he's got that jump hook. He's got the 15-foot jumper. He carries the Irish. And Kennedy with a couple of free throws gives St. John's the lead. He has four points. St. John's 23-21. Token pressure right here in the backcourt designed to take time off the shot clock and then back into zone. They don't feel that Pittsburgh can shoot well from the perimeter, and that's why they're packing it in, and it's done very, very well so far. Excellent offensive rebound by Biggs, and they get it back outside to the general. Advance field to watch the long ball, and that three-pointer gives the Panthers the lead. He does what's required among the best point guards in the nation and certainly among the best in this league. LeVance Fields, not a great shooter, but when they need shooting, he's capable. But he's a great uh, court leader and uh, distributor of the ball, and now St. John's getting a couple of putbacks, and on the third try, they get it down. St. John's, it was Thomas who got the bucket for them. Four red jerseys on the offensive boards. St. John's is showing great effort in this game. A lot of quickness. The arc seems to be open, and then it closes. That time they did get the long look. The Panthers did. Well, Blair drawing a lot of uh, attention underneath the basket. One of the problems of a 2-3 zone is you can't block out well, so on this jumper, he does not get blocked out, gets inside position, and when he is there, you can forget about it. He's going to get the ball with those long arms and strong hands. Foul on Justin Burrell, fifth team foul on St. John's in the first half. First on Burrell. Well, if there is one part of Blair's game that is not excellent, it is his free throw shooting, only 55% from the arc. And we talked about his wingspan, Don. He could get you a cup of coffee sitting down with us here on the sideline, I'm telling you. 6'7 height, 7'3 wingspan. Here's something to ponder. Would you better be better off being 7'3 with a 6'7 inch wingspan? <laughs> or 6'7 with a 7'3? I think this way, right? That's a good so. point. <laughs> like Spider-Man, he comes out of nowhere and grabs. He's got four offensive rebounds today, Dewan Blair. 
Boy, he gets after it on the boards. Steal by Dixon. Horn defends. Good foul by Horn, who got picked. Make a good points at the free throw line. So Pittsburgh's very well known for its defense, and uh, right here, jump in the passing lane when the pass is away from your own basket. Dixon, well educated in that area. Be nice play. He's only 65% from the free throw line. Doesn't give a lot of offense. His defense is his calling card, and that's why he's a starter on this team. Paris Horn, who's done a very, very good defensive job to the sideline. Hit Bob uh, struggling at the free throw line. Down three of nine. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. But the Panthers uh, do have a one point lead. Hey, Jans are moving the ball against this tenacious pit defense, which is so quick to double the ball like they're doing right now. They get out there fast, <laughs> and they recover fast. That's the big thing. Marshall deflect by Roberts. It's an open ball. Don, when you trap like they trap like it, and you get through it and get a quick shot, but they recover so well out of the trap. Well, there's an intentional foul intentional on Gilbert foul. Brown right there. Shots in possession. Well, right here, passing away from your basket casually, and that's something that LeVance Fields doesn't normally do. And watch the grab of the shirt by Gilbert Brown right here. One of the better ways to stop a fast break, unless you get caught. He did, and here's Kennedy at the free throw line. DJ Kennedy, a 6'6 sophomore. Had a 20-point, 10-rebound, uh, four-assist game against uh, Notre Dame the last time out for St. John. 67% free throw shooter. Yeah, he averages 13 a game. And, uh, you know, when Anthony Mason went out, he kind of became the go-to guy on this team. Kennedy is not afraid to go after it. He's kind of a small forward type, playing well in this game so far. And the, his left-handedness, I think, is an aid also. Throws some people off. Unfortunately for St. John's, Anthony Mason Jr. went out for the season in November with a foot injury, required surgery. But uh, Norm Roberts was saying, He's progressing really well. Surgery successful and his rehab's going well. Yeah, and, and it, when you add Malik Booth to that, the starting point guard on this team, it's amazing that St. John's had beat Notre Dame and that they're playing so well against Pittsburgh right here with two of their star players out. Evans takes it all the way through. Too much on it. Battle for the boards. And St. John's comes up with the ball. Oh, oh great man. left hand <laughs> look by Kennedy. I'll tell you what, he was fading out of bounds. He's feeling confidence. It's amazing how that goes with college players, isn't it? Guy plays a great game against Notre Dame, so feeling good about himself. Confidence a big deal. Well, he should feel good about himself today, Bob. He's got eight points already, DJ Kennedy, and St. John's is back in the lead by three. You know, I'm wondering whether this uh, all publicity about Pittsburgh being number one, and it's been like that for eight days, I don't think consciously that the players have let down or anything like that. I think it's motivated St. John's to play against the number one team. They're playing with great passion out here, and Pitt looks a little lethargic, frankly, at the offensive end right now. St. John's with 10 turnovers. When you were on the coaching staff at Duke, Bob, you guys were number one on a number of occasions. Uh, does it bring additional pressure, do you feel? I think it does, Don. You know, when you're number two, everything's great and all that, but as soon as you're number one, the national media, all of this stuff, the fans, everybody gets all excited about this. I mean, nothing changes. You still practice and you still play games, but I think there's some subconscious uh, downplay right here for Pittsburgh. At least it looks that way to me early in this game. It can go on runs, though, and they do it. King on this defense, it takes the ball away. And here is a LeVance Fields. They give him an open look, and he ties the game. From Xavierian High School in Brooklyn, uh, the high school that produced one of the great players for St. John's, great players for anybody, Chris Mullen. Yep. You know, it's interesting. Every time they need something, someone makes a play. And LeVance Field, of course, is the head of the parade in that one. And Dixon making a good steal here. Young might have taken an extra step. Can't get the shot to go. Another try, and finally St. John rips it down. Young has been invisible in this game. Early on made a three. 
Haven't seen much of him lately. Now they've done a well, good job of defending him, and now St. John's fighting for the ball. And uh, Norm Roberts got his message through to these guys. The intensity continues. <laughs> Indeed it does. Both teams very good intensity. If you're Pittsburgh, number one in the nation, eight-day layoff, a little rusty to start, what do you do? You go after it at the defensive end, and that's what's keeping them in the game right now. Offensively, they have not been in good rhythm at all, but defensively, they're creating a lot of turnovers. That's 12 for the Red Storm already in the game. And still with 4.07 to play in the first half. If Pittsburgh was shooting anything from the free throw line, they'd be ahead in this game by a considerable margin, but they've been weak here as well in the game so far. Gilbert Brown. Right now, the two best things for Pittsburgh is throw it up on the board as if it's a pass to Blair. He'll get it and score, or let LeVance Fields take a three. Because everybody else right now is shooting bricks for the Panthers. How about that smile? You gotta love the way this guy is enthusiastic when he's out there, huh? It's, all, it's not all sweetness and light though when you get near him down down low. He's a very physical player. And he is an excellent player. Dewan Blair as Pitt now takes a three-point lead. Look at this double team right here. Now watch them get back. Not in time. Excellent execution by St. John's. They're knowing what to do against the trap a little bit better than they were earlier in the game. Back out of it, get a pass close to the basket quickly. Juan Blair just got a second personal foul, and Rob Thomas will be going to the free throw line. We come back looking to complete a three point play and to tie the game again. A man on the boards. What was the first thing your husband said to you that morning? He looked at me and said, Susan, where am I? And why was that upsetting for you? My name is Diane. I need that lawyer. Give me a lawyer. I didn't kill anybody. I'm not a killer. Crazy times call for crazy fun. Plan your escape at visitlasvegas.com. You're in the market, but what do you want your numbers to add up to? Maybe a time-tested way to help reach your financial goals. At Oppenheimer Funds, we follow proven principles, like investing for the long term, so you can ride out the market's ups and downs, and perhaps end up with the second career you've always wanted. Call your advisor for prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses before investing. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Is the program every day is to make you better stronger lean fit and healthy it really works John has helped me out so much fitness made simple has really changed everything about my life I lost five pant sizes in 12 weeks using fitness made simple fitness made simple videos help you learn the right way to do things for a healthier life. You put it together, it worked for me, it could work for anybody. Call now to order our best-selling fat-burning workout DVD and John's new book. Change your body, change your life with Fitness Made Simple. Make sure to also visit John on MySpace.com. This is Don Crickey with Bob Wenzel back at Pittsburgh where the score has been tied six times. There have been ten lead changes already. Right now the number one ranked Pitt Panthers up on St. John's by a point, 32-31. We'd like to say hello and thanks to our fans watching in 16 states on our Big East Game of the Week. Along with our viewers watching nationwide on ESPN Full Court at ESPN360.com. Shenley High School, and also uh, read of that is the famed Andy Warhol. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and these were teammates there playing against one another today. They won the uh, state championship that year. DJ Kennedy and Dewan Blair. Terrific, terrific high school teams. 
Don, for Pittsburgh so far in this game, Sam Young, their leading player, is one for nine from the field. Raina Holiday, DJ Kennedy's mom here, cheering with a St. John's shirt on. But Sam Young so far, one for nine in the game, and that's the reason this game is so close. Averages 19 a game. And he looked like he was going to light it up all day long. He hit his first shot of the day, a three-point shot, Sam Young. And back come the Red Storm now, game tied again. It's rough down there. Evans comes up with it. Horn frees himself up. Good ball fake. But Lance Fields comes away with the ball, and there's a foul call. But I'll tell you, Pittsburgh has a reputation of a very physical team, but St. John's is physical as well, and they are holding their own against Jamie Dixon's team today. Jamie wanting a foul on the last play down the floor when Fields got hammered at the three-point line. Foul on Rob Thomas, his second. And uh, St. John's with ten team fouls, so it's a double bonus now for Pitt. And just four of nine shooting free throws. Golf fans and golf pros registration for the 2009 ESPN National Golf Challenge is already underway for courses and teams in the growth. Net a new 55 and older senior division. For more information, log on to ESPNGolf.com. It's St. John's looking to break another tie. Well, it's an offensive foul right there. Kennedy taking it on the dribble. Norm Roberts doesn't like the call, but uh, this game has been physical. It's been poorly shot. Bad free throw shooting by Pittsburgh has helped St. John's stay in the game. Sam Young's lack of effectiveness has helped St. John's stay in the game. And St. John's has helped themselves stay in the game by playing very aggressively on the defensive end. As fouls on Dealey Coker. Here's a miss by Pitt. And the ball is tipped away and away from running on the full speed move. There's uh, Jermaine and Dixon all the way to the rack. And one. Nice drive by Dixon. Pittsburgh needs to get some easy shots to get some separation in this game. They haven't been able to do it. St. John's is fouling aggressively. And right here, length of the floor dribble by Mr. Dixon. Head and shoulder fake, splits the defenders. Plays it off the glass nicely. Pittsburgh 6 of 14 from the foul line so far in this game. Now 7 for 15. If I were St. John's, I would keep fouling if they continue to shoot that way. 35-32, Pitt Panthers number one in America have the lead. The lead has changed ten times. There have been seven ties. St. John's is not going away. The strength of this league is evident in this game. Nine teams in the top 25 in the Big East. St. John's kind of an afterthought in the national picture, and they are playing tough on a foreign floor against the number one team in the nation. 16 teams in this league. All will be in Madison Square Garden for the Big East tournament. What an event that is. 16 teams, 15 games over five days. <laughs> and the winner goes to the NCAA tournament. If they're still alive by the That's end crazy. of the day. You know, the interesting thing about the tournament this year, Don, is that the top four teams at the end of the year will get a double bye. They go not in the first round, but in the second round, they get two byes into the semifinals. Teams five through eight get one bye, and the other teams, eight through 16, play the first day on Tuesday. So a different structure for the Big East tournament this year. First time ever it's been like this in college basketball history. And as you know, Bob, uh, Pitt loves the Garden. The Pitt Panthers, their last 30 games at Madison Square Garden, they've won 23, 23 and seven. That's 77% uh, wins at Madison Square Garden over the last 30 games. And of course, they are the Big East uh, championship winner last year yeah. in March. And they won four games in four days to do it. Only the second time in history that's been done. Syracuse did it a number of years ago with McNamara being the star player there. I still can't believe Philadelphia 76ers never picked up Jerry McNamara. The guy brings 30 busloads of people where he plays. <laughs> he can hit threes. Oh, boy. First foul on Sam Young. Frustrating day for the All-American candidate. This guy at the line is playing terrific. Confidence built in the win over Notre Dame. 
He's a sophomore. He's taken it to the basket very well. He has drawn four fouls against Pittsburgh guys. Ten points so far in the game for DJ. As you mentioned, right, right here, Shenley High School in Pittsburgh. We talked about the late Andy Warhol. Unfortunately, it's also the late Shenley High School. They closed it. DJ left, and they figured we're not going to continue. <laughs> here is Biggs. Boy, I tell you, Jamie Dixon speaks well of Tyrell Biggs. He said he really helped us. Dixon's off, and then driving with a left-hand shot is Jermaine Dixon. And the pick again extends to a three-point lead in this airtight game. A minute and a half to play in the first half. Dixon averages seven. He's got eight already in the game. Hip ball. Long ball to Young. Lead and... Showtime at the peak. Gilbert, get out of here, Brown! Wow! Athlete to athlete. The zoo is loving it. Yep. Uh, standing room only up and cheering the Pitt Panthers. Challenged all day by St. John's. Now they go to their biggest lead, a five-point advantage. Dixon, Young, Gilbert Brown, no dribble, 94 feet. That's the way you complete a fast break. Wow. Green Bay Packers used to have a defensive lineman named Gilbert Brown, who they listed at 340, not close. 400-plus. <laughs> Well, this is the more slender Gilbert Brown. No relation. He can run the floor, I'll tell you. We mentioned earlier in the game, Don, he started 15 games last year, has been in a reserve role this year, and has embraced that, and has done extremely well with it, averaging seven points a game. St. John's down by five. Trying to find something inside against this uh, tough, tough, Pitt Panther defense. They reset. 14 on the shot clock. Great move by Horn. And look at the putback. <laughs> Haley Coker. I'll tell you what. One dunk at one end, one dunk at the other end. The intensity level through the roof in the game right here. Long ball. Fighting the Evans gets a hand on it. Taken back. Long down. <laughs> Pittsburgh. Well, Sam Young gets that high percentage slam, and it is now a 41-36 lead again. The Panthers by five. Well, one way to get back into the game is get up and get some dunks going because you're not making shots. Right here, Delhi Cooper. He sandwiched that one in there nicely, and then right here, Sam Young with the answer at the other end on a great pass by LeVance Fields. A left-handed one-dribble pass in there. This is exciting stuff now. Only the second basket for Sam Young had a three to start the game, and then that one. Officials doing a good job. The Big East officials, Ed Corbett, Michael Stevens, and uh, Doug Shows. A lot of contact, a hard-fought Big East game. Coming out halftime, we'll have our Big East wire, where we'll look at Pitt's big three, and we'll take a look at our first-half highlights and stats. Sam Young, only two for 11 in the game, and Pittsburgh has the lead. High five. They have depth, don't they? Gilbert Brown comes in. Dixon's playing remarkably well. His best game of the year so far. Big excitement on the Big East Network is right now St. John's a rising team in the conference coming off the biggest win of the Norm Roberts era. He's in his fifth year, the upset of Notre Dame. Although I don't know if it is an upset when they play Notre Dame at the Garden. <laughs> Beating their last two and four of the last six. And that'll do it for the first half. So in the first half of Saw, ten lead changes and six ties. They go to the locker room with number one pit. Up on St. John's, 41 to 36. Well, events fields threes have helped. The little point guard, when they are in a tough way, he responds. And DJ Kennedy taking care of business. Blair with 12 points leads the way for Pitt. Welcome back to the Peterson Center, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's time now for the Big East Halftime Report. Don Cricky with Bob Wenzel. Halftime of the Panthers and the St. John's Red Storm. 
It's time now, Bob, to take a look at the big three and the number one Pitt Panthers. Well, I'll tell you what, Sam Young is the most athletic guy in this league. And when he's not playing basketball, he could join the cheerleaders at halftime with this athleticism. Leave him. <laughs> He uses the athleticism on the floor, thank goodness for Jamie Dixon. Can really run the floor and leap, obviously. One of the more athletic players in the league. Number one player on the number one team. And then we go to Dewan Blair, a super rebounder with a big wig span. I'll tell you what, he is an unbelievable on the offensive boards. Against Georgetown, 20 points, and get this, 17 rebounds. He taps the ball to himself. He clears space under the basket. In the back line, maybe the key Panther is the general, LeVance Fields. He makes it all work. He has a flair for the dramatic. Beats Duke at Madison Square Garden last year. Almost kicks his coach in the face. And LeVance Fields has got a wicked ball handling abilities. The front change of direction. And he is a great passer, averaging 6.5 assists per game. The stocky point guard is the unquestioned leader of this group. So there you have it, the Panthers' big three that's helped propel Pitt to its first number one ranking in basketball ever. We'll be back with more of our halftime activities from Pittsburgh in a moment. Welcome back to the Big East Halftime Report at the Peterson Event Center, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number one pit against St. John's. Big East basketball continues Saturday when Dominique Jones leads the South Florida Bulls into Morgantown to take on Bob Huggins' West Virginia Mountaineers. That's the game of the week on the Big East Network as South Florida takes on West Virginia Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 Central. Check your local listings. We'll be back with first half stats and highlights after this. At the half, the Pitt Panthers lead the Red Storm of St. John's 41 to 36. Don Cricky with Bob Wenzel, a former head coach of Rutgers and Jacksonville. In fact, neither of those teams have been back to the NCAA since you were head coach. Maybe this year. <laughs> There's always hope. <laughs> well, the Pitt Panthers, like the Pittsburgh Steelers, pride themselves on defense. And it's hard to solve that defense, as evidence, St. John's has turned the ball over 14 times in the first half. Yeah, 14 turnovers. But when they did not turn the ball over, they shot 48%, which is pretty good efficiency. That's why this game is as close as it is right now. From an effort standpoint, uh, they've been terrific, St. John's, and they're still very much in the game as we look at the PNC halftime highlights. Well, Dewan Blair draws a crowd, and he got fouled a lot. 12 points and seven boards in the first half for the big, strong inside player of Pittsburgh. He did a terrific job in there. And then the break. Watch the left side of your screen. Gilbert Brown throwing it down. And of course, on the other side, St. John's best player in the first half was DJ Kennedy. 20 and 10 against Notre Dame. 10 points already in the first half for this swing man. Made a shot from the perimeter. His confidence is exuding, and he's passing it along to his teammates. Right here, Nelly Cooper with the dunk on the weak side. Five guys with two fouls for St. John's. Looking at the halftime numbers, uh, very good shooting, as you mentioned, Bob, by St. John's, and good free throw shooting. It has uh, not been stalwart at the line uh, with charity. But they're getting those second chance points. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's been an intensely played game, and, and I think the statistics reflect that. One of the things that is not shown on here is that Sam Young did not have a good first half. Two for 11. He normally averages 19 a game, only one for five from downtown. So Young's lack of involvement makes this game a little bit closer. And a big possession for the Red Storm to open the second half of play down by five. Well, St. John's wants to win another game against their rank opponent. They got Notre Dame in the garden. This is a more daunting task. Hit with only a three rebound advantage. 22 to 19 in the first half and a tremendous play. Across the lane goes the freshman Quincy Roberts. They say he has no concerns about pressure, no conscience when it comes to firing it up, and they like that. Hey, he's got the confidence thing going, which is really a very, very good thing. And he's got seven points going as the Red Storm cuts the Pitt Panther lead to three. 
Missed by Blair. He takes it back. And a lot of it. Not for the fate of hard. And DJ Kennedy knocked down after he rebounds. But uh, no problem, says DJ. All part of the game. Crashing into the boards. St. John's with a 15th turnover. Up court, the ball goes to Dixon. And a good look with the left hand. And a five-point lead for the Panthers. Dixon not normally a scorer, but got 10 points in this one already. And the last time a Pitt team of any kind was number one in the country, as this Pitt basketball team is, was back in 1982, when Pitt football was number one for the first three weeks of the season. Head coach of the Panthers. Ballers is here today with the recruits. Dave Wanstead. Right now. Dixon really doing a good job right here. The poke away right there by Blair leads to the easy breakaway. Then on the next possession, Dixon creates the turnover on the sideline. He's really playing a fine game so far in this one. They're trying to post Sam Young, try to get him a shot early to get his confidence up. Levance Fields doesn't have enough on it. And here comes Pitt as Sean Evans rebounds. St. John's with 16 turnovers in the game, only 14 field goals, but the Red Storm very much in it. Down by five. And a lot of their players sat in the first half with two fouls. Paris Horn was out a long time. He's back in the game, number 23, solid player. Second leading scorer on this team. He with the ball right there. It is not a team that brings full court pressure because they uh, Jamie Dixon feels that it was an up and down and nicely hit. He feels that when you have pressure at one end, you give a lot away at the other end. Yeah, and, and he doesn't want to gamble. His his philosophy is play from the three point line and in, challenge shots, make the other team miss and board. Sean Evans with that last basket for St. John's now has seven. Dixon shoots 16 percent from three-point range, but not afraid to knock this one in. Well, his, his percentages, Bob, are going up. <laughs> and that is the biggest lead of this game, six points. Freshman Jermaine Dixon. We've got a ton of stuff we've got to pay for. And a few things we want to pay for. On top of it all, we're still trying to put away some money for the future. With the wish list, we can save up for anything we want. And still have enough to cover the day to day. Plus, the savings engine helps our money grow. And that's something we need and want. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC, a high definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. Tropical flavors bring out the best in fresh seafood. At Red Lobster, we're bringing new island-inspired entrees to you. Like tender, wood-grilled Caribbean rock lobster and shrimp, brushed with a sweet and spicy glaze. New Hawaiian Isle shrimp and salmon. And new wood-grilled citrus rum shrimp and scallops, flame-seared to seal in the juices. Wood grilling and the flavors of the islands. A whole new way to love seafood. For a limited time, at Red Lobster. You're up. Nah, you go ahead. All right. Impressive. Where'd you learn that? Some fancy golf school. Hey, how'd you learn to do that? What are you, taking lessons? Come on, what's your secret? You got your own pro? Yep, got a bunch of them. The key to better golf is the best instruction, and Golf Digest is the only place you can learn from the game's hottest pros. Ernie Ells, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods. Call today, and for just $14.97, you'll get 12 issues of Golf Digest with easy-to-follow techniques, equipment reviews, pocket tips, and much more. Subscribe now, and you'll get this DVD free. Renowned instructor Jim McLean demonstrates practice plans that will help improve your game. What do you mean you got a bunch of them? Here, order your own. Call now to order Golf Digest, 800-543-6200. That's 800-543-6200. January 3rd at Georgetown, Dewan Blair handled the inside, scoring 20. Sam Young and Tyrell Biggs each scored 14 as then number three pit. Handled number eight, Georgetown, 70-54. to 54. And soon after that... 
The following Monday, Pitt was number one in the country in the rankings where they stand now, Bob Wenzel. And Carolina lost in that uh, juncture to Boston College, and that's what put Pittsburgh where they are right now. And LeVance Fields, the leader of this team. You know, it's interesting, Jamie uh, Dixon told us before the game that he's had a lot more responsibility thrown on them since they've been number one. And at the eight days off, I think is is been sort of a negative because he's had to do all of these other things. I talked to uh, one of the St. John's uh, people. They told me they were on a plane on uh, coming here and they saw Jamie Dixon's interview on Rome is burning on their way. And they said, did he say anything about us? <laughs> <laughs> Number one carries a lot of stuff with it, doesn't it? Well, okay. one of the things he says, you know, people told Ben Holland and him not to come here when Ben Holland got the job. He came as an assistant. Jamie Dixon says, come on to piss the greatest thing that ever happened to him. That a lot of people have tried to get him to leave. It's not happening. Well, I'll tell you, four years with Ben, and he's been the head coach six years. Turnaround jumper doesn't go by Burrell. Here comes LeVance Fields, They're so smart with the ball, always searching somebody out. Long ball. Gets you drafted. Oh, he snatched that thing. I think they got to get a new ball. The air is out of this one. Ten rebounds for Dewan Blair and an eight point lead for the Pitt Panthers. And here's the defense forcing another turnover. The pressure never stops, but St. John's gets it back. Kennedy having a good game. Roberts, the freshman, drives. Whistle stops play. Blocking foul on Pitt. You want to see a rebound? Watch this on the weak side by Mr. Blair. Oh, man. You talk about strength and the long wingspan. He's fun to watch. He is. LeVance Fields just got his uh, second personal foul. First foul, the half on Pitt. No fouls this half on St. John's. The line could be important. As this game wears on. It's been close right now. Pitt with its biggest lead. He's got that uh, skilled left hand. Career high for Mr. Dixon. He had 14 earlier in this year against Miami of Ohio. Career high. 15 points. Seven already in the second half. Baseline drive. Fake. Nice fake on that move. When you go behind Mr. Horn, good things will not happen. Nice one on one move by Dixon. Big East in the top 25. Nine teams in the top 25 in last week's rating. First time in history, Don, that that has happened. When I was coaching, I used to vote on this uh, every week. And of course, you know, when you're in that position, you've got to study all of the teams. And never, ever before has nine teams from one conference been selected in the top 25. That is an historic event. That's the good news for the Big East. The bad news for the teams in it, they have to play each other. <laughs> right now, Pittsburgh on a 7-0 run, extending to its biggest lead of the game, 50-40. to That was a sweet stroke. Knocked down by Justin Burrell. You know, part of the problem when you wear a mask like Justin Burrell is wearing is your peripheral vision sometimes gets in the way. The one that he has situated on his face I think is, is good because the sides are out of it. I think he doesn't have that problem. Bodies fall every time there's a shot. Burrell's down on a box out by Blair. Dixon with an Aaron three-point drive. St. John's gets a three-point look, didn't hit iron, and Blair rebounds again. And always about quickly into the hands of that sure-handed point. LeVance Fields. Doesn't go by Biggs. Ah, too much on the lead down court. Attempted to get it to Harris Horn. Roberts with too much on it, so St. John's misses a golden opportunity to get closer. 14.44 left to play. The Panthers are led by five of the half with an eight-point lead. Nobody.
Everybody gives you more power than interstate batteries. And we have a national warranty program with over 200,000 dealers to back it up. How do we make them so powerful? <laughs> now that's a secret. Get the battery with more power in it and the most power behind it. Interstate batteries, outrageously dependable. You're in the market, but what do you want your numbers to add up to? Maybe a time-tested way to help reach your financial goals. At Oppenheimer Funds, we follow proven principles, like investing for the long term, so you can ride out the market's ups and downs, and perhaps end up with the second career you've always wanted. Call your advisor for prospectus with complete fund information. Read it carefully and carefully consider fund investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses before investing. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Don't pay another mortgage payment or maintenance fee on your timeshare. Turn it into cash. Call timeshares only. We got rid of those maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only, for making it so easy. At timeshares only, you'll find properties from the biggest names in the industry. If you want to buy, sell, or rent, call now. No more mortgage payments. No more maintenance fees. Thanks, timeshares only. Call timeshares only and get your free information kit with our insider secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares, plus receive a free $100 gift card. Our thousands of satisfied customers have made us the largest resale marketplace in the world. Call Timeshares Only now. Your free information kit with our 10 secrets on selling your timeshares waiting. The over $5 billion sold in the past six months proves now could be the best time to sell. Call Timeshares Only today. Thank us tomorrow. Call Timeshares Only now and get your free information kit. Turn your timeshare into cash and never pay another mortgage payment, maintenance fee, or tax bill again. Don't wait. Call now. Call 800-314-0762. That's 800-314-0762. Call 800-314-0762 now. We're back at the Pete, they call it. The Peterson Events Center, University of Pittsburgh. Don Crookie with Bob Wenzel. Dewan Blair having a good game, and Sam Young uh, showing his athleticism a while ago. This is a guy 6'6", 220 pounds. Looks like a Russian gymnast. <laughs> and the 6'7", Blair with the 7'3", inch wingspan. That translates to double doubles. He averages 14 and 12. He's got 14 and 11 in this one so far. Show you're talking about the Big East and how tough it is, Bob. You're right now, early in this conference season, only four teams are unbeaten. Syracuse, Marquette, 4-0. Pitt and uh, Louisville, both 2-0. And there are three, three and ones. Connecticut, Notre Dame, and Providence uh, coming up nicely. Yeah. Keno Davis doing a great job in his first year as the coach of Providence. Outstanding. He was at Drake last year and led them to the NCAA in his first year of coaching. Big East team to watch. You don't hear a lot about, though. As we have LeVance Field stroking from outside the arc and building the lead is the Marquette Warriors, or they used to be the Warriors, now the Golden Eagles and the Marquette. They have NBA quality guard play. Three guards, Dominique Jones and uh, Dominique James, I mean, and uh, Wesley Matthews and Jarrell McNeil, I think, is the best of the three. Pittsburgh heating up now. You know, early in the game, they really were out of the flow offensively. Now they are very much in the flow. And they can happen fast. I guess they do that when you're the number one team in the country. And all of a sudden, Pitt is extended to a 14-point lead. Man, that happened quick. And the big three took care of business. Two threes by LaVance Fields and Sam Young, and Blair patrolling the inside. Kennedy. And the ball is taken away, and then a whistle stops play at 13.26 to play. Big factor now, Bob, is that St. John's cannot lose confidence. They played great against this standout pit team on the road. Well, it's not going to get any easier for Norm Roberts and St. John's after this game. They go, they play Connecticut next. Of course, Connecticut may have the biggest and most talent of any team in the conference or country. They've got to come back right here. This game is not over by any stretch of the imagination, but a big spurt right now by Pittsburgh's got them the, the breathing room they need to operate well at this end. St. John's right now, Don, you're right. They don't, they don't need to lose confidence here. Just keep playing aggressively the way they did in the first half. Kidd is on a 15-4 run in the last five minutes. 
It is on a 17-4 run in the last five minutes and 15 seconds. Sam Young has returned for the second half. Only two for 11 in the first half. The all-big East Conference player has returned with a vengeance here. He is a senior from Clinton, Maryland, Sam Young. We check the Big East standings. No nights off in the Big East with nine ranked teams in the last polls, the last uh, ESPN USA poll. You mentioned uh, Marquette with their three-guard lineup. Syracuse is 4-0. Johnny Flynn is absolutely spectacular with his quickness. And, of course, Louisville won a squeaker yesterday against Villanova. On the road. Yep. Connecticut very, very deep in uh, Notre Dame. Aaron Gody and McElarney and Torrey Jackson, a nice triumvirate there. And, of course, Georgetown only 2-2, two and two, and yet they handed Connecticut their only loss of the year. You look at the Pitt Panthers upcoming schedule. South Florida comes here to Pittsburgh on Wednesday then at Louisville. Louisville will be rising in the ratings this week. Syracuse comes in at West Virginia. Villanova at West Villanova then Notre Dame here in Pittsburgh. South Florida's game here will be on ESPNU. And then of course the next five games against all ranked teams for Pittsburgh. That will tell a great deal about the fortitude of this team. 16 teams in the Big East, an 18-game schedule, then on to the Big East Championship at Madison Square Garden, which Pitt won last March. We're coming to you from the University of Pittsburgh. St. John's against the number one-ranked team in the country, the Pitt Panthers. Don Cricky with Bob Wenzel, 12.55 left to play. And after a five-point advantage of the halftime, the Pitt Panthers have extended to a 16-point lead. And the defense of the Panthers doesn't go away. It gets tougher. Well, they double the ball so quickly. And they cover out of the double team quickly as well, huh? Now you get over by that uh, boundary line, and they're going to just absolutely put a pincher move on. You can't move. <laughs> well, yeah, when they trap on the sideline, the sideline or the end line becomes the third defender. Foul on Biggs on the rebound there. He's really come around a lot, hasn't he? Tyrell Biggs, he's yeah, a had, senior. Had 14 in the win at Georgetown. Yep, big game for him. Hey, for a big guy, he shoots the threes well. Doesn't shoot him often, but he's 9 of 16 for the season. Tyrell Biggs, 56% uh, threes. He's had a lot of different roles for this team over the years, you know, and, and uh, he stayed with it all the time. He's gotten better. His body has changed for the better as his years has gone on. LaVance Fields is a senior, Biggs is a senior, Sam Young a senior. A lot of experience on this team, and Dixon develops experience by playing guys earlier in their careers. And they love it in Pittsburgh, sold out. Uh, Bino Cook, Pittsburgh Panther Emeritus, longtime uh, sports information director, said he never thought he'd see the day we had to know somebody to get a ticket to a Pitt basketball game. <laughs> He said he'd like to be buried in the Peterson Center. <laughs> There's that trap along the sideline again, this time between Brown and Biggs. I'll tell you, when you have a guy like Gilbert Brown who comes in off the bench, who was a starter last year and who's as athletic and as good a player as he is, that is quality depth. Trap on the sideline again. 16 on the shot clock. St. John's looking to get it inside. Evans with a nice pull-up, but too much on it. Blair tips it out, taken away. And Thomas with a good move after taking the ball back. And it's 58-46 Pitt. Well, St. John's is sticking with it. There's no doubt about that. There's no lack of hustle on the boards. They've got to crank it up at this end like they did at the beginning of the game. Paris Horn really doing a nice job denying out there on fields. 30-second timeout. 11.26 left to play. Next for St. John's, the UConn Huskies, and then off to Villanova. Big East basketball continues Saturday when Dominique Jones leads the South Florida Bulls into Morgantown to take on Coach Bob Huggins' West Virginia Mountaineers. West Virginia number 22. That's the game of the week on the Big East Network as South Florida takes on the Mountaineers. Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 Central. Check your local listings.
This is what pit defense does to you, Bob. You can be in the game and in the game and fighting your way and getting leads and seeing Ty. And all of a sudden, Pitt puts that defense on, forces turnovers, and they're off and running. Yeah, and, and they're running much better in the second half than they were in the first half. Kennedy not as visible in the second half as he's been in the first half. I was very impressed with Paris Horn's defense on Levance Fields. Fields is out of the game right now. I think he was wearing him out a little bit, denying him all over the floor. Paris Horn, the guy that shut down McElhinney of Notre Dame and uh, the St. John's win their last time out. Ashton Gibbs right now is going to run the show for Pittsburgh. Number 12 guarding right out here. Freshman point guard. He has a younger brother that's better than he is. And he has a younger brother than that who's better than the one that's better than him. That's what Father Mike Kelly who runs uh, Seton Hall Prep told me. So the Gibbs are coming on mass. Talk about filling the lane. Wanamaker does it on this one. Speed to burn. So now with 10.42 left to play in the game, number one Pitt, first in college basketball for the first time ever with a big lead. What was the first thing your husband said to you that morning? He looked at me and said, Susan, where am I? <sighs> and why was that upsetting for you? My name is Diane. I need to Crazy times call for crazy fun. Plan your escape at visitlasvegas.com. I've never been all that great with my money. Probably because I've never had much. But now that I'm making more, it's time to be a little smarter about how I manage it. With the calendar, I can schedule all my payments. And when funds are low, Danger Days help me stay out of the red. I can also transfer money with just a click and a drag. So maybe I'm better with money than I thought. Introducing the virtual wallet from PNC. A high-definition online view of your money. PNC, leading the way. IO HD pixels. We need to deliver the best color, the best sound, the best HD picture. I'm talking. Is red for real? I'm talking nothing he loves best. football. I mean the best. Just football? IO has all nine New York sports teams in HD. The sharpest detail on every play, every tackle, every cheerleader. Cheerleaders. <laughs> Incredible HD picture, awesome HD sound. IO TV brings you the best HD experience, free. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez here at Coin Galleries of Oyster Bay. Old coins can be valuable, so whether you're buying or selling, deal with the best. The professionals at Coin Galleries of Oyster Bay. Bring in your coins, paper money, sports memorabilia, gold, and diamond jewelry. You'll always get a free appraisal and a fair price. Come visit my teammates at Coin Galleries of Oyster Bay. Coin Galleries of Oyster Bay, Long Island's largest rare coin and memorabilia store. Now in three locations, Oyster Bay, Limburg, and Levittown. 1-800-200-0129. Jamie Dixon, guy who said uh, our goal at the start of the season was not to win any polls in January, but it's nice to be number one. Their first game is the number one ranked team. Later today, the Pittsburgh Steelers hosting San Diego in an AFC divisional playoff game. It's uh, Steeler weather outside, temperature in the 20s. Nice brisk wind, snowflakes in the air. Yesterday, they had uh, some really driving, uh, almost sleet which would even be more delightful to the Steelers. I was worried about you getting here for this game. You know, Newark was closed. New Jersey was closed. I got out of Dodge early. <laughs> Good ticket. Wanamaker at the free throw line. Offensive rebound. Toughest commodity in the game. And nobody's better than Blair at getting him. Oh, this guy loves to play. Doesn't he? He's got a smile on his face the minute he's on the court. He loves to rebound. He was in the second spot on that free throw. He was not blocked out and slid right across there. Very, very. Nine offensive rebounds for Blair in this game. He's over his averages. Of course, he's an adventure here at the free throw line. Only about 55% for the year. 
Look at him. He's just laughing. A lot of moving parts in that free throw, Bob. <laughs> yeah. A lot of red shirts get moved when he moves inside so also. A lot of things okay. are moving before he lets this go. Legs, shoulders, arms. In the hole. Two for two. Yeah. Took him down like uh, Scotty Reynolds of Villanova. He leads the league at, I think, 95% free throws. Steal. E.J. Kennedy, the native of Pittsburgh, with a left-hand bank shot. Man, that was a tough shot. Running one-hander floating toward the ball, toward the backboard. And Kennedy Bob back in his hometown has 14 for the day. Yeah, just at his average, one above his average. Put back. Really well done by Robinson. Robinson didn't play in the first half, and this is how Jamie Dixon develops his players so that they always seem to be experienced. Gets them in the game when they got the lead. Lead to Gilbert Brown, who is fouled as he goes to the basket. Little fatigue right now on the part of St. John's. Burrell has been down about five times in this game. I shot Edmondson, freshman guard from Hopkinsville, Kentucky for St. John's, called for the foul. Well, there's always going to be action on the boards, and right here, Burrell gets knocked down. It's like he's grabbing his right ankle right here. This is not good. Malik Booth, point guard for the Red Storm, still not back with that thumb injury. And, of course, uh, maybe the best player in St. John's, Anthony Mason Jr., has been out since November and will be out the rest of the way this season. Well, Norm Roberts has had to deal with a lot of injuries, and what he's done is he's just told the guys, wherever's out there, you do it. And he's developed the young players like Paris Horn, who's a sophomore, Quincy Roberts, who's a freshman, and DJ Kennedy, who's only a sophomore. Those guys are getting all the minutes now. Brown uh, stroking smoothly at the line, extends the pit lead to 20 points. 9.40 to go. Steal and a breakaway. Wanamaker goes the distance and gets a standing O at the peak. Right now, number one pit putting on a clinic. Another steal. Jamie Dixon not happy with an Aaron show. <laughs> Four on one. That was not a clinic at all on that particular play. Want to make around the break. The look off to get the defense away, and he comes through nicely. 6 4 player. Now, St. John's, every trip is vitally important as they're to inch their way back into this game. 9 0 8 to play. Evans was effective in the first half, and he gets a turnaround shot up and down. Put Robinson on the floor before doing it. St. John's lost their composure for a while and then made a lot of bad passes where they were getting in position where they gave up a lot of the easy baskets on the break. Robinson down to Blair. He sets it up and down. A nice uh, move by Nasir Robinson getting the ball inbounds down low. Blair is going back to the free throw line. Well, this is strength right here. He gets fouled hard by Delhi Cooper and still is able to get his arms up. There's seven of 12 from the field, six of eight from the free throw line. Put on clinics free throw shooting. <laughs> well, it's getting better for him. They love him here in Pittsburgh, huh? The heat is on in the peak, and it doesn't go away. Jamie Dixon up, clapping his hands, keep the pressure on. This is where Pete Pittsburgh excels at the defensive end. Reject by Gilbert Brown, but the whistle will uh, be a foul on uh, Pittsburgh. First half, there were 10 ties, seven lead changes. Pitt was up by five at the half. And then they really kicked in with the full game. Starting at the defensive end, that ignites it all. 
I think the eight-day layoff for Pittsburgh uh, really hurt them early in the game, don't you, Don? They seemed a little out of sync at the offensive end, and now offense and defense working well together in this one. It is. He called it, the Jamie Dixon called it his bye week. They didn't play for uh, eight days, and St. John's the same thing. Yeah. Once you get into the season and that happens, I mean, you, you know, teams get rhythms. And once you're in your rhythm, you want to keep that. You don't want to get out of any kind of situation where things are different for you. Hey, off what we've seen today, Juan Blair, power forward, Pitt Panthers, is a got to be a contender. Looking at his numbers, 14.7 points, 12 and a half rebounds. Is player of the year in the Big East. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, player of the year nationally is a possibility for him. This is the number one team in the nation, and he is the, the beast on this team, averaging a double-double. Levance Fields with great hands. Fields the long pass. Puts it in on a reverse. And a 23-point lead for Pitt. You know, you talk about big guys in the conference, and we talked about Harangoni, Griffin of Oklahoma. Blair certainly is in uh, the conversation with him, and he is being thought of as the top player in the nation this year. Amy Dixon not happy with uh, throwing away a chance, but what the Pitt defense has done is forced 22 St. John's turnovers. In the islands, tropical flavors bring out the best in fresh seafood. At Red Lobster, we're bringing new island-inspired entrees to you. Like tender, wood-grilled Caribbean rock lobster and shrimp, brushed with a sweet and spicy glaze. New Hawaiian Isle shrimp and salmon. And new wood-grilled citrus rum shrimp and scallops, flame-seared to seal in the juices. Wood grilling and the flavors of the islands. A whole new way to love seafood. For a limited time, at Red Lobster. The kids have been wanting to go to the safari theme park since last summer. <laughs> so we used our city cash returns card to buy the tickets and stuff. So cool. It was great to get close to the animals, but not that close. Luckily, we used the cash we got back to help pay for some body work. Earn unlimited cash back with your city cash returns card to make every dollar count. Whatever your story is, your city cash returns card can help you write it because city never sleeps. Two fans are you seeing red? St. John's basketball tickets are on sale now. Coach Norm Roberts and the Red Storm are heating up Madison Square Garden. Be there on Thursday, January 15th at 7 p.m. to see the Red Storm take on Big East rival UConn. Reserve your seats now for all the heart-pumping excitement St. John's basketball has to offer. For tickets, go to redstormsports.com or call 1-888-GO-STORM. St. John's basketball. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Sometimes you can hear lung cancer in smokers before you see it. There's a whistling noise. It's the air racing around the lung cancer that's almost completely blocking an airway. By the time most lung cancers are discovered, it's already too late to operate. K-Rod. Heading to New York. What's next? Kevin Burkhardt has the latest on the Mets winter workings, shaping your 2009 Mets roster with special guest analysis, opinion, and exclusive interviews on all the additions and subtractions, plus the latest news from all around the league. Mets Hot Stove, presented by Sponge Tech, Thursdays at 7, only on SNY. A tremendous coach. He's a big recruiting job right now. Is uh, hoping to keep running back Shady McCoy and staying in school, not going to the draft. Hey, McCoy was the best back I saw this year, and I saw the USC tandem of backs, Southern wow. California. That's high praise. Saw so Javon Ringer, Michigan State. I'd take McCoy over any of them. But they think he can be even better if he comes back for his junior year. He's actually a redshirt sophomore, McCoy. But he is eligible to leave, should he so choose to do. He's supposedly going to give his answer tomorrow. Nine points for Evans after the last bucket for St. John's. Boy, one of those guys who gets yards when there's nothing there. <laughs> Blair's one of those guys who gets rebounds when there's nothing there. 21 points, 13 rebounds for Blair in this game. He had 20 and 17 against Georgetown. 
Blair comes out on the court smiling before he warms up. I mean, he just loves it. Loves to play the game and plays it uh, superbly. Here is Evans. St. John's working hard. Deli Coker put up put back. And we're down to 6.30 to go now. It's interesting what a difference Blair makes in a game. The other team doesn't get a lot of offensive rebounds when he is in there. He's on the bench right now. St. John's repetitive jumping on the board that time. Gets them a deuce. Wanamaker. Robert Brown. Gonna get his own pass there. And up and down is big Gary McGee. Two point a game score from Anderson, Indiana. Anderson, Indiana, one of those Indiana towns, Bob, where the, the gym, the high school gym, seats more than the population of the town. <laughs> There's the undefeateds right now at Wake Forest. Play at number three, North Carolina tonight. Well, Wake Forest has two terrific, terrific players that I love. Clemson, of course, we should mention. Uh, Jeff Teague is their guard, and they, they have uh, Joe Johnson, who is an unbelievable player. 6'9", 260, he can play the two or three. Wake Forest is the biggest team in the nation. They could go, listen to this, 6'9", 6'3", in the backcourt, 6'9", 6'11", and 7'0", in the front court. They can run a team with that personnel in the game. Winston-Salem skyline. <laughs> North Carolina, their sixth to 15 game road winning streak on the line. Hansborough, nine straight games, 20 plus points. I tell you, people for whatever reasons try to demean him as a player. He's a, he's a tremendous player. Oh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, he's an unbelievable, will probably be among the candidates, of course, for the National Player of the Year again this year. He won it last year. He's got that hair and goatee toughness. <laughs> Hit by 19. Penetration and a hack as uh, Paris Horn looks to shoot off the dribble. He'll go to the free throw line. You know, in football, you talk a lot about undefeated teams, but in college basketball, obviously, it doesn't happen much. And uh, especially in the Big East, these nine ranked teams are going to play one another. Nobody's going to go undefeated. And of course, tonight, one of those undefeated teams possibly could get eliminated with Wake Forest playing Carolina. Well, it's been 33 years since a team went wire to wire unbeaten in Indiana in 76. Golf fans and club pros, registration for the 2009 ESPN National Golf Challenge is already underway for courses and teams in the gross, net, and new 55 and older senior division. For more information, log on to ESPNGolf.com. Well, St. John got to try to pick up a little full court right here. Watch fields on the left side of your screen being denied by Paris Horn. Paris Horn takes a great deal of uh, pride in his defense and gets a touch foul right here. Horn did a very, very good job on Kyle McElarney, and that was a big factor in St. John's win against Notre Dame. And of course, he wants to do a good job on fields in this one. Now this pit team, number one, as we've been talking about, Bob Wenzel, for the first time ever, uh, over the last seven seasons, they've won almost 80% of their games. They've uh, won five Big East titles in the last seven years, three uh, Big East regular season championships, and two Big East championship tournament uh, victories for the Panthers. They've been number two in the national rankings 16 different times, but that's very different than number one the first time. Indeed it is, and, and you know, they are so consistent. They're so reliable with their style of play. It doesn't vary much. They are not a team that goes spurting up and down, and their defense and rebounding is the key to their success. And, of course, that kind of play also helps you in tournament play. Last year, they won the tournament. The year before that, Georgetown won the tournament. Stylistically the same in terms of taking care of the basketball, not turning it over, and being a strong rebounding and defensive team. Here's Blair back of the line. Ten offensive boards in this game for this young man. And he's making his free throws in this game. I like that, huh? Not a high arcing shot. He's now uh, 
Seven of nine from the line. This is a guy who shoots in the 40s from charity. 22 points. Talking to John Conamites, who is the uh, chairman of the Pittsburgh Athletic Committee. He said the beat goes on. There's some great players coming in for Pitt basketball. Well, they've got it going. There's no doubt about that. And uh, they've got great facilities here. Not only the arena, but the locker rooms and all that. Very, very nice stuff. We went in before the game and spoke to Jamie Dixon in their film room. It looked like one of these places where uh, the Hollywood guys, you know, you know, go over the films before we see them in the theaters. Beautiful, beautiful. And this, is, this is a great building, I'll tell you. It really is. Mr. Peterson is, but he certainly did a good job. <laughs> Dixon with that sweet stroke. St. John's looks tired now. I think they're fatigued out. They gave great effort in the first half, kept it, kept it close, and then, of course, Pittsburgh got all over them in the second half, and their defense is now not what it was in the first half, and their ball handling has really gone down the drain. Pitt, so intense, uh, so well conditioned. I mean, everybody goes 100 miles an hour every second out there. There's never let up. Ever. Yeah, and LeVance Fields is the guy whose conditioning you would look at and say he would be the last guy on the team because of the broken foot that he suffered. Last year came back to play 13 games, and then of course he's looking good this year. One of the top generals in the Big East Conference is LeVance Fields. Eighty-three sixty-one. Now the Pitt Panthers on their way to a fifteenth win without defeat. Well, here are some of the guys, Don, that I think are the generals in this league. Tory Jackson at your alma mater. Of course, he has Heron Goaty to pass it to. Flynn, a scorer and distributor, and a flair for the dramatic price, of course. A longtime leader for that team. Dominique James, electrifying speed. Barry Sanders in sneakers. And, of course, LaVance Fields here leading the parade. The best assist to turnover ratio in the league by far. And, of course, a good game in this one today. A.J. Price of Connecticut really rounding into form at point guard after knee surgery last March. He really is the key to that team, which has pro quality talent coming off the bench. I agree. And, of course, they lost in the first round. To oh, oh, oh! How about that pass? <laughs> they lost in the first round to San Diego last year when Price was out. Fields, I love his passes where he just dribbles and doesn't even bring the ball to his either hand. Whips it. St. John's now just firing long distance, trying to get back in it. Fields so unselfish, always looking for the open guy. Big Dewan Blair reaching in there, trying to get a loose ball. It is again by that last excellent dish. Off the dribble, without getting his second hand on it, a magician with the ball. We're back with Bob Wenzel, Don Crickey, back at the Peterson Event Center, University of Pittsburgh, Big East Championship format. Teams one through four, double bye into the quarterfinals. Teams five through eight, single bye into the second round. Teams nine through 16, must win now five games <laughs> for the title. Five games in five days. I'm not sure I wouldn't uh, want to lose early and get ready for the NCAAs. That's going to be unbelievable. Well, that's a, a tournament as tough as the Big East Championship. That's one of the things to win it. You spend a, a lot of fuel, don't you? You really do. And uh, but it's such a great thrill to do it. Two teams have won it four games in four days. Syracuse and these Pittsburgh Panthers last year. Other than that, no one's done it. Great ball movement sets up Gilbert Brown. They have such balance on this team. Four guys in double figures in the game. Pittsburgh has 33 field goals in this game. 24 of those have been assisted. Oh. There is a uh, interesting shot by Sean Evans as he tried to slam it. It bounced straight up and through. 
St. John's needs about a dozen three-pointers going up and through. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, I, I mean, that you, you can see the depth of this team, and, and Pittsburgh with their leading scorer not having a stellar game in Sam Young, especially in the first half. Other guys had the opportunity and performed well, most notably Dixon in the first half. The power index, the RPI rankings, also has uh, Pittsburgh number one, Duke number two, Clemson, Xavier, and Michigan State. I'll tell you, Michigan State looked great yesterday against Kansas. They are physical, and of course, the Final Four this year at Ford Field in Detroit. So Tom Izzo's team hoping for a almost home game in the Final Four. Why well, is Tom Green now at uh, Indiana, coach at Marquette, who coached under Tom Izzo at Michigan State? What's the key to his success? Intensity of practice. They really get after it. Oh, I'll tell you. I mean, it, it's it's like a war in practice with that team. And, and Michigan State also hangs their hat on the defense and the rebounding side, just like Pittsburgh does. I think Michigan State's the best team in the Big Ten. Coming in the season, I thought it was going to be Purdue. But several of their players, including Robbie Hummel and Kramer, have been injured, and that's putting them in a little bit of a tailspin lately. 108 to play. Down the stretch run of the game. Ashton Gibbs out to Nasir Robinson. Yes, he's in the game now. Amy Dixon with the luxury of clearing his bench. The practice players getting a look and look at Kennedy go end to end. And the ball is up and down. Rob Thomas, who got the turnaround put back. But it's lights out Pittsburgh, 87-67 Panthers on their way to a 15-0 start. And maintaining their number one ranking in America. And they did it with depth in this game. Of course, the big three, LeVance Fields as the point guard. As Mr. Gibbs knocks in his three. LeVance Fields and Sam Young and Blair, and especially Blair in this game was outstanding, owning the paint at both ends of the floor. Mr. Gibbs, he's got a stroke. He really does, I'll tell you what. Shooting over 50% for the year on threes. Freshman point guard, Ashton Gibbs. Fields will graduate, and Gibbs will have the honors next year. And now the bucket ball is back over to the Panthers with uh, just 7.3 seconds left. They'll inbound the ball and run out the clock. As Pitt uh, challenged in the first half. First half saw 10 lead changes, 7 ties. And that will do it as the Panthers dominate in the second half and win it going away. It was fun watching that guy play. He's got to be their favorite player, especially in Pittsburgh. Local homeboy, grew up 600 yards from the Peterson Event Center. Juan Blair is something to behold on a basketball floor. 90 to 67. Once again, our final score, the Panthers over St. John's, 90 to 67. Now for Bob Wenzel and our entire Big East Network crew, I'm Don Cricky. Tune in next Saturday as the number 22 West Virginia Mountaineers play host to the South Florida Bulls. For more information on ESPN Plus, log on to ESPNPlus.com. Preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. As we say, thank you for joining us. So long from Pittsburgh.